who is in Berthoud taking a look. And Kim, the fire behind you, if you can hear me, that is the one that is in lines. And it seems that it has grown and intensified with the smoke and in the color here in the last half hour or so. Okay. Um Hi guys, uh, yeah, we are live out here. I'm having a little bit of issue with my sound, so I'm gonna take out my earpiece. Um, we are in Berthoud along County Road 23, and behind me, you can see the Stone Canyon fire that is burning in Lyons, and the smoke is uh, blowing. It is not going straight up in a column as it was a short time ago. It is uh, dispersing. And then if we pan to the north, you can see just how far away the Alexander Mountain fire is. I was there earlier today when there were many people in their homes being told that they had gone from a val voluntary evacuation notice to a mandatory evacuation notice, and we were there as different people were packing up. All right, Kim, yeah, if you can leave your live picture up right now, I just want to get, get uh, share some information that we just got from the Office of Emergency Management in Boulder County. Um, so as we mentioned, you know, there are evacuation centers that are opening up for the Stone Canyon fire that's burning. And we already told you about the Boulder County Fairgrounds in Longmont that has opened up where you can bring livestock there. They are accepting that. But also we're just learning that you can also take animals to the Jefferson County Fairgrounds in Golden. So if you find yourself needing Needing to evacuate and you have animals including large animals you now have two options the Boulder County Fairgrounds in Longmont the Jefferson County Fairgrounds in Golden we just saw just to give you an idea of sort of the, the frantic moments that people are dealing with right now trying to get um, individuals and animals to safety there is the Greenwood Wildlife Re Rehabilitation location um, they are also evacuating right now just to give you a sense they are southeast of town as well well, and they are right now evacuating their animals. Uh, let's go back now live to Fox 31's Kim Posey. Kim, you've been speaking to people um, who are dealing with this awful situation. What have you been hearing? Yeah, hi guys. Um, sorry, we're having some issues with the audio, but um, we have talked to several people who have been evacuated. Uh, one person we talked to in a Red Cross shelter today said they had lost everything in the Cameron Peak fire just a few years ago, and now they're in a rental house uh, over near the Alexander Mountain fire, and they had been evacuated from their home there. So this is just such a difficult time for so many people. You can see behind me once again, this is the fire burning in Lyons. It is very smoky here. I'm standing in Berthoud looking toward Lyons and the smell of smoke is very strong right now. The wind is blowing. And then if we turn uh, to the north, you can see that is the Alexander Mountain fire. And we did talk to a few residents today as they were evacuating their homes. Let's hear what they had to say. Cops came up and said it's time to evacuate, so we went up on the back side of the hill and looks like it's time to go. So that man actually told me that they climbed the hill behind their house and the fire was about two ridges behind them. So clearly a lot of stress in that area. We were trying to get out of that area and a ranger pulled over and told us that if the wind changes direction, do not even look back, just go. That's that is frightening and ominous sign right there that you talked about a short time ago. Kim, I'm wondering if you could talk about how much that smoke has grown. I know you don't have the best vantage point of it, but of the fire down in Lyons, I've seen some reports that there's a lot more black smoke that's blowing off of there right now. Do you see any of that from where you are? Uh, you know, it's interesting because when we first got here, it looked like it was blowing up in a column. And now to me, it feels like the winds have picked up and the smoke is spreading out over a larger area, if that makes any sense. Uh, the smell of the smoke, the strength of it is intensifying. The colors you can see perhaps to the north, it's more white and then more to the central, it is darker in color. Of course, that means the uh, stronger fuels. Yeah, Kim, I was actually going to make that a point to 
note that it does appear to be smokier in that direction. And just to be clear, that that's the direction of the fire, the Stone Canyon fire burning near Lyons right now. Um, it does appear to be smokier. And, and Kim, I got to say, the wind definitely sounds louder from just even within the last 20 minutes um, that we spoke with you. And, and I do believe that that speaks to uh, the, the windy conditions that they're dealing with. Not extreme winds by any means, but just enough to not just spread the flames, but also spread that smoke that we're seeing. It looks certainly much thicker right now just behind you there. And you know what? These two fires look a little bit different right now. Um, Robert, if you can sort of pan out to see the Lions fire, and you can see it's sort of brown in color and it's taking up a large space here. And then if we turn to the north, it's more white and gray smoke going more straight up. And that talks about the wind that you're seeing right there. Unfortunately, smoke blowing is not a good sign. I'm not sure if Dave Frazier is back there and with us. Be curious to get an update on the wind to see potentially how it's changed in the last half hour or 45 minutes or so um, that Kim has talked about that. But basically, any wind is not good wind right now with the fires, especially with the fire, the uh, Stone Canyon fire just north of Lyons. We know how close some of those flames were to other homes besides the one that has already burned. And just a quick note before we get to Dave Frazier, we're hearing from the city of Fort Collins. They are essentially closing two uh, very popular trails, the Coyote Ridge and Bobcat Ridge natural areas. Uh, they're closed right now, and it's because of the Alexander Mountain fire that's burning. Um, so this is in for, uh, city of Fort Collins again, but this is because of the Alexander Mountain fire. And, you know, they could speak to why they made this decision, but one point that you made, Matt, is they don't want people out and about if they don't have to be. They don't, their resources are spread thin right now, and they need to be focused on the two major wildfires that are burning right now. Absolutely. In case you're just joining us here as we approach 3.30, what you're seeing right here is a video from Sky Fox just maybe about an hour or so ago. That was the home and a couple of cars that burned. And this is with the fire, the Stone Canyon fire that is burning just to the north of Lyons in this area. This fire popped up. It spread extremely quickly um, with the wind, uh, the high humidity or the low humidity and the high temperatures in that area. And one of our crews actually just arrived nearby where this Stone Canyon fire is burning. Foster Wins, Gabby Easterwood is joining us live. Uh, Gabby, what have you been able to see? I see that you've been talking to maybe some individuals who maybe had to evacuate or certainly residents that are being impacted. What can you tell us, Gabby? Yeah, residents are definitely being impacted. We've spoken with some people that live a little bit closer and they tell us that they have had to evacuate, as we know, as we've been talking about on the air, a lot of evacuation orders are in effect right now. You can probably hear the wind in my microphone that is affecting this fire this afternoon. Now, we stopped on the side of the road just to grab some video before we were heading over to one of the evacuation centers, and we actually stopped here at the Christian Promise Fellowship Church, and I actually have the pastor here, Don, with me. And Don, you said that you're going to be opening an evacuation center here for people that are affected by this fire. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. We want um, people to have a safe place to come, um, so we're right just uh, south of Highway 66, about a half a mile on uh, North Foothills Highway, which is Highway 36. Um, so if you need a place, your animals, whatever, we have the doors open. Absolutely. And, and you, you said that you have people coming here with like supplies and water and things like that yes. too as well. Yes, supplies, water, food, snacks, um, whatever we need to do to provide for the community. Absolutely. And I know obviously as a church, this is something that's important to you guys, but why is this something that you, you wanted to do? Did you see the fire happening and just thought to come out here and, and open this up? Um, actually, all of that, you know, when, when there is a crisis like this, your first, you should just fall into line to see how you can serve, how you can help the community. And that's exactly what we want to do is to help our community that we serve, um, especially when they're going through this. Absolutely. So maybe for people that are watching that are, are, are working on evacuating or people that are watching that are saying, oh my gosh, I would love to help out you guys. What should they do? Um, really what you can do is just show up. Um, we're bringing in bottled water and snacks and bread, um, linens, toothpaste, uh, toothbrushes, um, first aid kit, whatever we need. If you think that there's something else that we're missing off of our list, please come and help because it really is going to take a community to help. They, 
to help the community here. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Don. And like you. you said, she is right off of Highway 36 here. So as you can see, just down the road from where this fire is being affected. But again, firefighters are saying you can see that the wind and uh, the fire is kind of taking things the other way. So we're expecting that we could potentially could be safe in this location. But of course, if things get dangerous in this area, Don is going to going to make sure that these uh, people that come here are going to be safe. But again, everyone is welcome. Everyone is welcome to come here. So just wanted to make sure that people are aware of that. And like she said, if you want to come out and help, you're more than welcome to do that as well. Back to you guys. All right, Gabby, before you go, can you have your photographer zoom in as close as we can to see the, the best view of this fire as that smoke comes off of it? We're having trouble getting a kind of a, a new glimpse of it there. So if we could go ahead and see that, if you two could step out of the way. And at the same time, we can talk with Chief Meteorologist Dave Frazier just about how strong those winds are. And Dave, it appears certainly that they have picked up over the course of the last half hour. Are you seeing that? A little bit, yeah. There's a difference between what's up aloft. You can tell by the smoke, right? It's it's not going straight up like we were dealing with yesterday. It's being blown along a little bit more. So speeds are starting to come up to 15, 13, uh, 13, 15 miles per hour. But then the wind kind of picks up momentum. So where Gabby's standing, it gets a little stronger there at the base of the foothills. And certainly if off to her west, she has a canyon. So in other words, the wind is funneling down the canyon. And we don't have sensors everywhere along the inches of the foothills hills here. I will tell you that that black smoke, that fire must have hit something because we talk about this all the time. The, the coloration you guys were talking about in the smoke can vary from what type of vegetation there is burning, whether it's a sagebrush or maybe it's crowning in taller evergreen trees. But when you see black smoke, more than likely that is a structure fire or something because you're dealing with chemicals now. And so that black coming up on the top there, I don't like seeing that. That's not good news. All right, Dave, um, thank you for that update on the wind. B b don't go anywhere just yet. I just want to share this information because we just got this from the Larimer County Sheriff's Office. It appears that they are expanding the evacuation area for the Lions, the Stone Canyon fire burning northeast of Lions. It's the live picture that you're looking at right now with that dark smoke billowing into the air. It appears that now the Blue Mountain and Spring Valley area, this is north of Lions, the folks in these areas should evacuate immediately. We just heard this from the Larimer County Sheriff's Office. And so it does appear that they are asking more residents to leave their homes, to leave this area, because there is enough fear and there are believe that those individuals are in enough danger that they need to leave that area so that they are not impacted by those moving flames. Now, right, bottom line, if you are anywhere near this in those evacuation zones, it get out because the fire can spread extremely quickly. And this is what we are seeing right here. A live look on the ground of the smoke just billowing off of that Stone Canyon fire north of Lyons in Boulder County. And now we know there are new evacuation orders spreading to the north right there. Um, it is windy. There are two wildfires right now spreading these resources thin. We have this fire here near Lyons that is growing. Not sure if we can get an estimate on the acreage up there, but a lot of firefighting resources are being diverted here from the Alexander Mountain fire. When we spoke to Victoria, she's an administrator with the town of Lyons. This was at least in uh, 45 minutes ago, just to give you a sense. She said that what she learned was that the fire had already burned 10 acres. We can confirm to you that number is much larger at this point, at least 45 minutes later since we last spoke with her. You could see that there are still flames burning right now. That smoke is becoming darker as we're watching live with you on air. I do believe we need to show you a different live picture because the crew who's bringing us this live feed now has to move to a different location. And the reason for that is because we are hoping to hear from Boulder County officials who will be be giving us an update on the Stone Canyon fire again burning northeast of the town of Lyons. We expect to hear from Boulder County officials right around 430 in the afternoon. And of course, we will bring you all the information that they give us at that moment to you live here on Fox 31. So bottom line, we are waiting to hear new updates with new information about both fires that are burning. We know this is the one, the Stone Canyon fire that is burning north of Lyons. It's burned at least one home and two cars. But as you saw a short time ago, there was a lot of fresh dark fuel that has been burning right there, putting off the dark smoke. That is one concern for firefighters. The other concern is the Alexander Mountain Fire that is still burning in the Arapaho Roosevelt National Forest just to the west of Loveland. Some new evacuation orders there, the mandatory ones for Masonville and some of the pre-evacuation or voluntary evacuation orders. Those are the ones getting inside of the city of Loveland. Chief Meteorologist Dave Frazier back with us now as we talk about the wind that appears to be picking up at least on the 
ground right there, as we saw from that live shot. And again, those extremely low humidity levels, Dave. Yeah, so I want to start with the wider view of the wind. You guys can keep the live camera up if you want. Um, you'll notice again, I was just talking about, we don't have a lot of sensors right at the base of the foothills. Uh, you can see the wind is picking up to the west. So there's your continental divide. And so this wind is starting to now kind of migrate to the east. And so we've seen the sensor at Estes Park come up. Georgetown, it's always a little breezy there. And so you're starting to see some of that wind. And what happens is, as the wind comes down the face of the foothills, it can get a little stronger. And so where Gabby was standing there, right next to, I'm guessing she was next to Highway 93 there on the west side, uh, which runs north to south here, you, you may get some gusty wind. And if it's coming out of the mouth of a canyon, it can be even stronger. And so this is what we're looking at. So here's your two fires. There's the one west of Loveland. There's Glen Haven, Lyons. Uh, you can see the sensors there, not showing a lot of wind up high, but look off to the west. You can see the speed of the wind arrows starting to pick up. Look at Granby. And so some of those stronger arrows, notice about an hour ago, the end of those arrows where the wind was strong was back here on the other side of the Continental Divide. Now, some of those stronger wind arrows are starting to feather over the top of the foothills and the Continental Divide and starting to reach the sensor in Estes Park. So my feeling is that we'll start to see these numbers go up. And certainly at the base of the foothills, uh, as you make your way down US 36 and US 34, you may get some rolling wind that's coming out of there. Uh, the temperatures haven't really changed, 85 to 90 degrees. It's certainly hot enough and obviously hotter near the fire. And the humidity values haven't moved at all. So we haven't really done much. And again, the two smoke plumes, they're very vivid to pick up here on, you can see the erratic nature. Watch the smoke plume go this way. This is the Alexander Mountain fire. You can see it there kind of curling around near Masonville and out towards Horsetooth Heights. And there's Horsetooth Reservoir to the north. And then it kind of backed off for a little bit. Now it's picking back up a little more. And then to the south, the fire here, the Stone Gate, uh, fire uh, coming up north of Lyons is starting to pick up and now that plume is heading straight off to the east although I've seen I think Kim Posey was talking about it got wind got a little erratic so initially when it came up it was a pretty good smoke plume and now it's kind of broken a little bit maybe the intensities or it's splitting into two sections is possible you know when you're dealing with this type of terrain you can get a fire to literally go around a point and so you end up with multiple areas you've got to protect and so that's what we're watching so we'll keep an eye out there's your two areas uh, uh, they're 15 miles apart, the two fires. We've got a great vantage point where we can see both of them uh, if you're off to the east, anywhere around Berthoud or uh, out towards Loveland or down towards Longmont. You look off to the west and you can clearly see the two different uh, smoke plumes. And then a reminder again, uh, it doesn't hurt even though it's late in the day. All of these areas shaded here, that's a red flag warning just to prevent you from hopefully not contributing to what's happening. So this morning it was about focusing on the Alexander Mountain fire and then we have the fire, the Stone Gate down near Lions and so now we've had to spread the resources and we don't not have to do that in this area here and it's basically this area you may be wondering well why not east of there everything's hot and dry it's about the wind so you, I showed you where the wind is. You've got to get to the continental divide and to the west. And so the heightened sensitivity is in the area where the wind is picking up. We're not noticing that wind as much down here across lower elevations. However, it has been so hot and dry, Matt and Erica, that anywhere along the front range, including Metro Denver, you've got to be cautious on days like this. Without a doubt, Dave, the entire area is basically a tinderbox. We'll take a live look back. This is from Berthoud looking at that Stone Canyon fire in Lyons. We're getting new reports in that say the fire has grown to at least 85 acres that is burning up there. Again, it's already engulfed one home and a couple of cars. People there evacuated immediately. Sheriff's deputies from Boulder County went door to door as soon as that fire sparked and they got reports of it. And some of those air resources diverted from the Alexander Mountain fire flew south to start dropping all of that slur as this fire here, I know it's hard to see, we saw it from the Fox 31 and uh, Sky Fox earlier, is just dangerously close to a number of homes in that neighborhood. Yeah, what we have been seeing is essentially these mandatory evacuation zones grow little by little. So more residents are being impacted by those mandatory evacuation notices. And we have the Alexander Mountain fire that's burning just west of Loveland, just to give you an idea. And then we have the Stone Canyon fire that's burning just northeast of Loveland. Lions. We had meteorologist Dave Frazier give us a sense of the distance between the two from point to point. And Dave, I don't know if you can hear me and fact check me on this. You said they were about 
15, 15 miles away from each other. And so what we're noticing is the mandatory evacuation zones are actually getting closer and closer to each other as well. And Matt, you made a really good point. Essentially, if you are in this area, if you live near this area or had plans to be in this area, you need to be constantly by your phone, watching the news, listening to local authorities because things can change and very quickly. And those mandatory evacuation areas for both fires are growing. They're not getting smaller at this point. And that is the big concern right now. And also sign up for the emergency alerts. The counties have them. Uh, that way you get alerted to know whenever these happen. You know, two hours ago, we weren't even thinking about lions. We weren't talking about Boulder County. Uh, then something sparked. Uh, the fire there happened in the Stone Canyon area. Um, and within minutes, that fire blew up. It spread. It burned a home, a couple of cars, um, and forced people out of their homes. And it diverted resources away from another fire. It's really the two different fires that are burning right here. And they're very different aspects. The one, the Alexander Mountain Fire, it certainly is the larger of the two. It's at least 1,800 acres. We're hoping to get an update on the size and the containment of it coming up here in just about 15 minutes. But that fire is sparked in a national forest, so there weren't any homes directly nearby. Um, there were the mandatory evacuation orders issued for people uh, that were relatively close to there, but none of those homes have been hit. They haven't been directly threatened by that fire. The fire in Lyons in the Stone Canyon area, very different. It sparked directly in some mountain neighborhoods right there, and this is what you saw right here. This is yeah. what Skyfax, uh, Skyfox captured shortly after that fire sparked and a helicopter was able to get over there. This is one home that is burned along with a couple of cars. We have not had reports of anyone getting hurt right here. We know that sheriff's deputies rushed out to this area to help people evacuate along with their animals. They were going door to door. And again, this is the fire now that we hear reports that it's about 85 acres. We've seen some thick, dark smoke headed off of there, which means the fire is burning some different fuels. We're not sure if that means more homes as well. Yeah, and hopefully we'll get an update from authorities at 430 in terms of the number of structures that have been burned, a number of acres total that have been burned to get the latest numbers, and certainly in terms of the containment and what the firefight looks like right now. Now, we heard from Larimer County officials who declared a disaster emergency, and that is so that they can open up resources and get access to state, local, and federal resources, an all-hands-on-deck approach to battle the Stone Canyon fire. We were speaking to a town administrator earlier today who said within the Stone Canyon development, there are about 100 homes and we know that the evacuation order extends beyond that. So there are, it's safe to say, dozens if not hundreds of families who are dealing with those mandatory evacuations as a result of the Stone Canyon fire. And as Matt just pointed out, unfortunately, um, pretty close to when this fire first sparked, we saw live on air a structure that burned as a result. And there could be more at this point. We have not been able to get that aerial footage that we typically get with Sky Fox. Um, this is video that was shot earlier this afternoon, right around two o'clock in the afternoon or just before. And, and Matt, here's a really important point. The reason why Sky Fox isn't able to fly right now at this moment and bring us those live pictures is because it's too hot right now for them to fly, which is also a reminder of what these fire crews are dealing with right now. Extreme heat. We are, at least out in Denver International Airport, as you can see right here, it's 96 degrees, but pretty much across the area, what Chief Meteorologist Dave Frazier has been telling us, it's essentially the mid 90s to upper 90s, which makes it even more difficult for those fire crews. It certainly does. It's just another obstacle that they have to deal with. We know there were about 250 firefighters on scene for the Alexander Mountain Fire, and others rushed out here to the Stone Canyon Fire. Because this terrain is a little different, it's a little more accessible for them. They were able to get on the ground as well to help get some resources out. Uh, their major job right here and their number one goal was to protect the homes that are in this area. And that is why they diverted some of the planes. You're about to see them do some slurry drops right here in the backyards and front yards of other homes. This is one of those air tankers that had been battling the Alexander Mountain Fire. It took off, well, well landed, fueled up with some of the slurry, made sure it was ready to go, and then took off and headed directly to Lyons, the airport here, not too far away from this area. So firefighters certainly have their hands full this afternoon. We talked about getting new updates. We're expecting two of them within the next 45 minutes. Yeah. Coming up at 4 o'clock at the top of the hour, we are set to hear live from the Type 3 Incident Management Team from the National Forest Service. That is the federal government, federal firefighters. They're now in charge of the Alexander Mountain Fire uh, that is burning just to the west of Loveland. And then at 4.30, we are expected to hear from 
from Boulder County authorities as they are the ones in charge of trying to contain the Stone Canyon fire, the newest wildfire that has popped up right here. And the latest video that we saw from here, this is from Sky Fox about an hour and a half, two hours ago, is that there was more thick, dark smoke coming from this area, which shows that the fire is growing. It is finding new fuels. It is finding dense fuels, potentially more homes. As Erica talked about, there were a hundred in the Stone Canyon neighborhood. There are also homes up above it, and that's where we believe this is the one yeah. that burned. So a number of neighborhoods right here besides just Stone Canyon, those people are being forced out of their homes. The evacuation orders there, as we talked about, they expanded for a Blue Mountain in the Spring Valley areas as well. And just a couple of things to keep in mind as you're gathering your things and perhaps are leaving your home to head to safety. Um, you know, have some patience because what we've been hearing from some of the folks who are evacuating, we heard from Dee Dee earlier today, she was evacuating from the Masonville area with the Alexander Mountain Fire, and she said that she was dealing with traffic. There are not just people who are trying to evacuate, but then just the daily traffic that we see in some of these um, more rural mountain town roads. And so I uh, just plan ahead and give yourself plenty of time because it may take some time to get through um, some of these roads to get again away from these evacuation areas and to safety. But also keep in mind there are several road closures in place. You're going to um, come up with the, against authorities and deputies who have some, some road closures. I'm sure you're, you're going to be able to get through if you're heading in the direction of safety and away from the mandatory evacuation area. And it goes without saying along with that, if you don't need to be in this area, um, first response are asking you please stay away right. what you do is you just slow down you slow down the evacuation routes for people you slow down the roads for first responders right there so for this new fire the stone canyon fire you should know there's an evacuation point set up right now at the exhibit building at the boulder county fairgrounds uh, there's also the fairgrounds animals can be brought to those that are in longmont so there are plenty of places for people to go those evacuation points are growing as well if you have to leave don't worry about that right away just kind of get out of that danger your area and then you can take a look and talk with the county follow us here and you'll see a number of places where people can go we're constantly updating that on our website right now at kdbr.com and speaking of, of um, some details and getting some co confirmed information from authorities there in boulder county we just heard from them from the office of emergency management and they're um they are able to confirm that what we're hearing is that the fire has at burned at least 85 acres and more importantly it is growing that fire is still growing right now they're also saying that they have multiple air tankers in the air that have drop retardant. Um, some of the pictures that we've been showing you from Skyfox from earlier today, we already saw that happening. So that has, has not stopped. They're continuing with that aerial support as well. Now on the ground, they have 10 fire trucks and wildland vehicles that are on the scene. And they're saying that there are more resources on the way. I would not be surprised if we start seeing uh, fire agencies from as far south as you know Douglas County and heading up north to help um, uh, some of these uh, fire agencies in the Boulder and Larimer County areas. Um, but again, we just heard this from Boulder County Office of Emergency Manager. Just a few details that they're able to confirm for us. Um, but we hope to hear more, and we expect to hear more right at 4.30. And of course, we're going to bring you that press conference live right here on Fox 31 News at 4. And we know Douglas County has already sent resources up there. They sent its helitac team. That includes one helicopter that can drop some water. And then they have crews on the ground that were helping battle the Alexander Mountain Fire earlier. And we saw it with some pictures that they put out you exactly see just how rough that terrain is now this fire the Stone Canyon fire here near lines that burned that home that Sky Fox is over about two hours ago the terrain is very very different certainly rough certainly dry but there are a number of roads in the area there are a number of homes as well and right here the number one goal for firefighters besides getting people and their animals out and making sure they are safe is to protect those homes protect those structures in that area this fire sparked I believe it was just about two o'clock today it quickly grew and now we know it has grown to more than 85 acres again burned at least one home um, as we take a live look, we can see the live look at the picture here of the fire. This is from Sky Fox a couple of hours ago, but now I want to show you what the fire has looked like. And this is the area that our Kim Posey, who is on the ground here in Berthet, has talked about just more dark smoke billowing out of this fire. Berthet is basically in between the two wildfires. It is a very frightening area for a lot of people to be right now. They are on edge, they are anxious, and they can see two smoke plumes. As we look here, we are looking at the one that is burning in Boulder. 
Butler County, uh, the fire that is in the Lions uh, just to the north of there. Uh, that smoke just continues to grow, certainly hoping that firefighters could stop the spread of this fire. But with the low humidity, the high temps and just the breeze that is out there right now, it is very, very tough for them. Some of the planes that were fighting the fire up in Larimer County have been diverted here. They're making slurry and the helicopter members are making water drops as quickly as they can. But firefighters certainly have their work cut out for them. Besides those air resources, we know there are 10 fire trucks and some wildland vehicles on scene. Many more are on the way. And with that, first responders are asking you stay off the roads in this area if you can. Uh, it is an emergency. They need to get their resources out there and people who live in these areas as these evacuation areas grow, they need to be able to get to their homes or get out of their homes rather as quickly as they can. So again, the news here on Fox 31, we are tracking two different wildfires. Um, we're expecting updates here, just about eight minutes, potentially a live update of the Alexander Mountain Fire that is burning in Larimer County. That is from the National Forest Service. They are in charge of that. And then at 4.30, we'll get an update here on the more destructive wildfire, the one that has already burned a home, at least one home in Lyons. Natalia Cunningham joining me now right here, trying to get the very latest on both of these fires. And unfortunately, when we sat here yesterday, we had one fire burning. We were very concerned about that. Now, less than 24 hours later, we are talking about a second fire one that has already burned at least one home yeah you, you put it perfectly Matt. and the thing is when we were talking about this yesterday we had no idea that a second fire would spark it is fire season all year round here in Colorado and the proximity of these two fires you can see it from birth it you can see the smoke plumes from both fires burning that just tells you how close in proximity it is uh, we're waiting to get updates from incident commanders and fire crews as we speak but we did hear from the incident commander on the Alexander fire uh, that's burning in Larimer County this morning who said that it was a significant significant increase in size just overnight and now they're battling with the winds as they try to contain it but the terrain is the difficult part that they're trying to deal with right now so as we know the fire that's currently burning in Lyons that fire they're able to have crews on the ground trying and working to put out those flames but that is th uh, threatening a lot of structures there which you would think that the urgency would be a little bit greater to get those flames out we know resources are coming in from at least Wyoming to help aircraft have been dumping retardant, slurry, uh, just things like that, and water drops trying to contain and get this smoke under control. And as you see that smoke billowing on your screen right there, this is a good reminder of air quality right now. It is poor. Uh, just last week, we had those wildfires burning in Canada, and that had a lot of smoke here in our area. That has since moved out because of the rain, but here we go, right here in our area. We're dealing with two wildfires that are making air quality poor right now. So CDPHE has issued an alert, so if you have infants keep them inside if you are elderly or have respiratory issues uh, or anything like asthma or allergies you're going to want to stay inside um, just to heed warning of this smoke all right and absolutely you talked about the resources some of those air resources and potentially some on the ground coming in from wyoming all across the west uh, there is a fire preparedness fire preparedness level of five right now that is the highest it could possibly be there are at least 94 potentially now 95 large wildfires that states and the federal government are battling there are at least four of those wildfires right here in colorado and unfortunately one of them the newest one to spark the stone canyon fire you see it right here sky fox is over that scene a short time ago has already burned at least one structure and two vehicles. Hopefully the people who live here and their animals were able to get out safely. We're expecting a live update from Boulder County fire crews coming up in about 35 minutes. Of course, we're going to bring it to you here on the Fox 31 News at four. And we're also going to go ahead and stream that and put that online for you. We know this is extremely important information for people. There is a lot going on as we again are tracking two different wildfires burning here. And again, and this is uh, the main priority uh, for for um, for firefighters, uh, the one that is burning in Lyons. Because of this, the proximity to homes right here, the one home that is already burned, and as you see this video from Sky Fox, other homes are nearby. Yeah, and Matt, as you mentioned, resources ex uh, really stretched thin right now. I was reporting last night, there's the park fire in California right now. It's making history. You've got wildfires burning in Oregon, Washington, New Mexico, Utah, just to name a few places. The whole West right now is dealing with dry vegetation and wildfires that are currently sparking so this is a good reminder this time of year, especially with these temperatures in the 90s, flirting with the hundreds right now, that do not do anything that could cause this human-made. We have campgrounds, we have sparking of cigarettes,
it's lighting up the grill, things like that you definitely want to keep in mind because this is the result or could be the result of people losing their homes, their properties, having to evacuate. And something that we talked about yesterday, we heard from one of the firefighters or incident commanders on scene with the Alexander fire, is that they said they made the evacuation zones bigger than necessary uh, in order to not move people at night. And here we are again, they're expanding them as that fire continues to grow. More and more people are having to evacuate, deal with road closures and keeping their property and livestock safe. Unfortunately, we know this very well here in Colorado, particularly in the last couple of years. Better to be safe than to be sorry. Put the evacuation orders in effect earlier rather than later. That way you know that people can get out. We know people take a lot of time sometimes to get their animals, their livestock out. That takes time. There are elderly people. They take a little more time to get out there. They may need some help. We know we heard yesterday there was an evacuation of someone um, who is on hospice who need a little bit of extra help. So it's some of that time that it takes. That's why firefighters put these evacuation orders in effect. It's not because necessarily homes are in imminent danger, as we've seen with the Alexander Mountain Fire, um, but it's because they just want to make sure that people can get out of there safely and in enough time. Then, of course, unfortunately, at the scene with the uh, Stone Canyon Fire, it is because homes are in imminent danger when the fire sparks basically in their mountain and rural neighborhoods. And I covered a little bit the tail end of the Marshall Fire back in 2022 in January when that was wrapping up in the aftermath of it. And I talked to a lot of people that lost their homes then and a lot of people say moving forward they're going to have what is kind of like we have as news reporters a go bag in your car. Things with important documents, fireproof things, the necessary items that you would need in case something or a tragedy like this sparks. So I think a lot of people are taking heed of the lessons that we learned from the Marshall Fire uh, just to take precaution in these kind of situations. And it is just one thing that unfortunately you have to expect here in Colorado, particularly in the communities that are closer to the mountains and the foothills where all those dry trees and brush are. So just so you know, here's what's going to happen. We're going to reset here in just about 30 seconds. We are expecting a live update from firefighters with the Alexander Mountain Fire. That is supposed to happen at just about four o'clock. Then in a half hour after that at 430, a live update with that Stone Canyon fire that is burning in Lyons. That is the one that is the most concerned for firefighters at this hour as that one started. So again, we thank you for joining us here on our continuing coverage. Matt Morrow along with Talia Cunningham and the very latest will continue in just a moment right here on the Fox 31 News at 4 as our coverage of these two large wildfires continues right now. This is breaking news on Fox 31 Denver. And we continue to follow two large wildfires burning right here in Colorado as we speak. You see them on the right. The newest fire is the Stone Canyon fire that is burning near Lyons. It is the fire that sparked earlier this afternoon and within a short period of time it's grown to at least 85 acres and has unfortunately burned at least one home right there along with two cars. Sky Fox was live over that as that happened. Yeah, this is the second fire that we are tracking as breaking news this afternoon. The first one sparked yesterday. We were on the air telling you about it right here on Fox 31. That's the Alexander Mountain Fire that is currently burning in Larimer County. It's grown over 1,000 acres in size. All right, and let's go right now. I believe firefighters are giving us an update on the Alexander Mountain Fire. Can we go live to them right now to get the latest right there from Loveland? Larimer County Sheriff. And Jason C., the acting forest supervisor for the Arapaho and Roosevelt National Forest in the Pawnee National Grassland. Again, we thank you for joining us today. We will hold five minutes at the end of this conference for questions, so we ask that you hold your questions until that time. And now I'll pass it off to Mike Smith. Good afternoon, everybody. Again, my name is Mike Smith, and I'm the incident commander for the Alexander Mountain Fire. I'd like to start out by saying thanks to all of our partners, federal, state, local, uh, that have really come together in a time of need. And we've seen a great collaborative and cooperative response throughout the uh, response throughout the incident. Um, currently, the fire is uh, just tipped over the 3,500 acre mark. Um, that was just flown by the multi-mission aircraft from the Division of Fire Prevention and Control for the state of Colorado a great asset for us and they've been uh, very helpful throughout this. Um, we don't have a map here currently because the fire is changing so rapidly. Uh, this fire was 900 acres last night and first flight this morning it was 1800 acres. Seeing that sort of fire growth overnight speaks to the dryness of the fuels and the dryness of the atmosphere. Those things combined with wind uh, really lead us into the situation that we see here. 
So uh, currently we have uh, about 270 firefighters on the ground and numerous helicopters and fixed wing aircraft working the uh, air show from above. We're utilizing retardant and water uh, any moment now, we're expecting to see what's called a scooper. It's something we don't see around here very often, but it's a fixed-wing aircraft that will actually fly and it lands, skitters along the top of the water and grabs water and comes back up. The real benefit to these uh, aircraft is that they can turn around when you've got lakes very close and put a lot of water on the fire very quickly. So they'll be dipping um, out of one of the local reservoirs here locally and uh, we're really looking forward to that asset being here. So the fire behavior is pretty much what you're seeing here. It's pretty active in what we call backing. So it's moving downhill against the wind. And as it does that, you know, it, 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 it's a slow moving process, but then as it backs to the bottom, it does what we call slope reverse. It comes back up the hill in a pretty aggressive fashion. So we're seeing that, that repeat itself on the back side of the fire. On the front side of the fire where it's got wind pushing with the topography, so wind and the hills aligning and pushing uphill, that's where we're seeing some of the more aggressive growth. Currently, we are seeing fire growth due to the terrain around this fire um, in three cardinal directions. It's moving off to the west, it's moving off to the north, and it's moving off to the east. We're having pretty good success on the east side. Um, we've just had a wind shift, which we're all paying very close attention to. Uh, we've had wind basically uh, out of the west, out of the north, but uh, a little bit, but now it's swung into a much hung, stronger northerly wind, and you can see that smoke bending over if you were to look over there. So uh, again, we are uh, looking at into the evening. We'll be having a night shift this evening overnight, trying to do what we can, but we are facing a pretty significant shortage of resources nationally. Um, fortunately, we've had great support because of the potential impacts that this fire poses to the community around here. So we are getting good support. The fact that we're going to have a complex incident management team coming in tomorrow, uh, they bring a lot more resources to bear, uh, and they're going to be able to do a lot more than we've been able to do with our Type 3 incident command structure. So tomorrow, we're, it's basically going to be a lot more of the same. We're hoping that we're going to get some hotshot crews in. We've also got some Type 2 crews. Those hotshot crews are really the tip of the spear. They're the folks that when we've got challenging terrain, technical um, assignments, they're the ones that we put out there to do that. So we're really looking forward to those assets getting here, but they are in real short supply, and the fact that we've got two coming is helpful, but boy, we'd take all we could get. Um, with that, I think uh, we'll continue to utilize the aircraft um, that we have. You know, obviously we had that start down uh, south, that's in Boulder County, so I don't have much information on that. I wish I did, but I would talk to the Boulder County Sheriff about that one. And uh, I don't really, I can't share anything about what I, I just don't have any information. So uh, as we look to tomorrow, again, we're gonna to continue to take opportunities where we can, but our main focus is firefighter and public safety. So if we can't get in and engage this fire safely and make sure that our folks can get in and get out and do the job that they need to, we're not gonna commit those resources. So we're doing what we can, where we can, when we can. So with that, um, that's pretty much my update. Again, we're at 0% containment currently. Uh, I hope that we're gonna see that start to improve uh, but it's going to, you know, really depend on Mother Nature giving us a break. It, looking forward with our forecast, looks like we're hot, dry, and windy until Friday and when the chances of moisture are going to increase, but it's not significant. So I thank you all for coming out. Uh, I look forward to the question and answer, and I'll hand it off to the sheriff. Questions? Hey, thank you, Mike. My name is John Fan. I'm the Larimer County Sheriff. My last name is F as in Frank, E-Y-E-N. So first off, for those of you who are local, let me orient where you're looking at. Right now behind me where your fire activity is, you're looking at Sylvandale Ranch. So if you're used to Larimer County or live in this area, you've passed by this many times. Where the fire activity is currently is actually the north side of Highway 34 in the, big, the mouth of the Big Thompson Canyon. So that kind of gives you an idea where we are. At this time, we've instituted several mandatory evacuation phases as well as voluntary evacuation phases. During those times, we've contacted 3,245 folks in the mandatory evacuation area. 
Voluntary evacuation areas number 826. During these evacuations, we are coordinating with the Department of Human Services as well as our uh, EMS providers in the area, Tops Valley EMS, to take care of those folks who have special needs or challenges in evacuation. So we've had a couple of instances where folks are taking care of their elderly parents and can't move them themselves, and we're making sure that get, that gets managed. Unfortunately, we have some areas where there is some impingement uh, on residential structures. We don't know if they're involved in it or not. We just know that the fire is backing into some of those areas. And unfortunately, the reason that it happens is like Mike was talking about, our number one priority after the evacuations is keeping our firefighters safe as well. And so we haven't had a chance to put teams into those areas just because of the fire activity. And we will do that as soon as it is safe for them and we will give everybody an update. Uh, we will do that as quickly as we can as soon as it's safe to do that, okay? Let's see, so when you get notified, if you wanna get updates about this, I would encourage you to go to nocoalerts.org and sign up for alerts. That way you can be advised of what the evacuations are in real time and we would ask that you follow evacuation routes. Let me talk real quick about animals. We're a very rural county in this area. Lots of folks have large animals. And so that's always a concern, right? Because your animals and your pets are a part of your family as well, just like they are in my, my household. So we have taken steps to make sure that you have a place to go with them as well. We initially had them out at the ranch, but as you know, the Larimer County Fair is starting up and the 4-H projects and all those things are just as important to the citizens of Larimer County as taking care of this fire is. So we were working with Island Grove over in Weld County. We've contacted all the owners whose animals we have taken to uh, the ranch initially, and we have moved them over to Island Grove. I heard that a state uh, CSU veterinarian services and the state veterinarian services are also working with us to make sure that all the animals stay safe at this time. So this is especially important. If you get a notification of a voluntary evacuation and you have a large animal, we don't want you doing that at night. We don't want to help you do that at night. We want to do it when it's safe. So help us help you and move those animals out when it's early and help us make arrangements for that so that we can keep you and your family safe. Let's see. Uh, okay, so lots and lots of folks are offering to help. I get those telephone calls all the time. I'm seeing it on my Facebook page. I'm going to tell you, you know what? We have a lot of resources. We greatly appreciate the outpouring of support and faith that the community is showing us. I'm actually going to refer you to the Red Cross. So contact your local Red Cross and see what you can do, whether it's providing your, your skill sets, your your passions, whether it's food, whatever that is, but contact them and they will help coordinate getting that out to the first responders in all the different areas that we're at. Don't drop things by because we're inundated with that stuff. And again, we're very blessed because you're a giving community. So thank you for that. But actually, I'd go to your Red Cross for that. Finally, um, let's see. I, I have to echo all of the thanks, right? We have about 250, 275 firefighters. We have federal partners, state partners, local partners, and we could not do this. When we, the initial call for help went out yesterday at 10.39 in the morning, within a couple hours, we had over 250 folks here willing to help us keep the citizens of Larimer County safe. Forest Service was here. They were a great partner with their air assets, and they continue to be a great partner. And I cannot be thankful enough that when time and crises hit like this, that we have all those partners that we can rely on. So we are very, very blessed in that fashion. If you need additional information, I would encourage you to go to Larimer.gov and look at the information that's there on the website and uh, contact, or contact our JIC, which is 970-980-2500. JIC is Joint Information Center. They can answer a lot of your questions if you need them or get you the right resources. They're open from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. every day. And I look forward to answering what I may have missed in your question and answer period. So I'm gonna turn it over to the Interim Roosevelt Arapahoe Forest Director Jason Sieg. Uh, good afternoon, Jason Sieg, S I E G. I'm currently the Acting Forest Supervisor on the Arapahoe and Roosevelt National Forests and Pawnee National Grassland. I uh, just want to reiterate the, this incident is a prime example of how close coordination and communication. Uh, with our state, county, and local partners has put us in really the best position possible to deal with the difficult conditions uh, that we're currently seeing on the ground. And as you can see behind us, the conditions are very difficult right now as we enter into this evening. Also want to give a big thanks to all the law enforcement personnel who have been assisting with evacuations these last two days. Um, the evacuation process 
for this incident is one of the most efficient and timely processes I've seen on an emerging fire incident. So big thanks to those personnel. Um, at this time, we will start a brief five-minute question and answer session. And so this is your opportunity to ask some, some basic questions. We may not be able to answer all of them at this time because this is still very much a dynamic situation. How Thank you. How challenging is this wind direction change that you guys are going Would you consider it a swerving wind or would you consider it's, it? It's very challenging, not so much in the wind speed, but the sudden change of direction. Is there a known cause at this point? The uh, cause is not confirmed at this point, but currently under investigation. Can you tell us more about where those residential structures that might be in trouble are located? Uh, I would defer that to our sheriff. Um, I don't have information on where those structures are located currently. So, so there's a couple of areas um, that we're looking at, in most, mostly on our eastern side and up the canyon. So to give it an exact air description of where those are, that's going to be tough to do, but that's where we're seeing the fire activity. And I just want to reiterate it. We're unaware of, that we've lost any structures at this point. We just know that fire is moving into that area and we're trying to keep it out. Yesterday we spoke about contacts, uh, devices that were contacted rather. Is that still the case? Those 3,200 contacted in the mandatory evacuations, those are devices? That is correct. I know rain is in, uh, in the forecast, but what condition do you hope, what, what could you use in the overnight hours to try and get, to gain a little ground on this? Well, certainly we need some more moisture in the atmosphere. The relative humidity has been extraordinarily dry. We're under a red flag warning today for winds, temperatures, and relative humidity. So uh, moisture would be good in any form, whether it's atmospheric or rain. I don't see a rain coming uh, anytime soon in a significant uh, amount that we would need to change the, change the real behavior of this fire. But uh, anything would help at this point. Any progress on any front? You just heard from firefighters there on scene of the Alexander Mountain Fire that is now burning. It quadrupled in size today. This just to the west of Loveland. Um, it is very alarming for firefighters because of how dry it is there on the ground and also the humidity levels in the air. They don't know of any structures that have burned just yet, but they believe the fire is backed into some areas. And as soon as it is safe, they plan to send firefighters and first responders there to see potentially if any homes and buildings have burned. And I think what was stressed today is how aggressively this fire is moving and changing with the wind speeds. Uh, we have two reporters. We're going to check in with them on the other side of this break and Chief Meteorologist Dave Frazier. We have your fire coverage when we return. across the front range. Stay with us on air, online, and on our app for Colorado's most accurate forecast. If it's happening in the evening, it's happening here. The most live breaking news coverage. The biggest team reporting from across the front range. Two full hours of local news at night. This is a commitment unmatched in local television. Jeremy Hubbard, Erica Gonzalez, and Chief Meteorologist Dave Frazier. Fox 31 News at 9 and 10. We're on it. We make junk disappear by giving it a new purpose. We donate the donatables and recycle the recyclables. And any organic materials are taken for composting. All you have to do is point. Call 1-800-GOT-JUNK. Are you currently on Medicare? In other words, do you carry the red, white, and blue Medicare card? If so, do you suffer with peripheral neuropathy and are taking drugs like gabapentin or Lyrica without finding relief? If you answered yes, then you may be eligible for a breakthrough treatment covered by Medicare at little to absolutely no cost to you. Neuropathy is